I had no fear because I'm not a criminal, I've not committed any crime whatsoever. Of course, I'm a perennial protester. But even on this occasion, for some reason, as a, even a public advocate, a public, uh, I mean, a media person, media personality, my right, who, I mean, features on major um, uh, media, I mean, uh, analysis. And as a uh, as a as a Chevney scholar who is a governance and policy expert, for some reason I didn't even accept invitations to do any analysis. But the shock was that despite that, I mean this uh Uded and uh, what is it called? A uh, mask man, 2 a.m. So I comfortably opened my door. I said, what's the problem? They asked me to identify myself, which I did. Two other people, I mean, three other people were with me. They asked after the first person who was behind me introduced himself, if there were other people. And when they did, I asked them to come out and they identified themselves. And the next thing was that Michael and Dara Mugi was asked to step aside. And I said, no, you can't. And they said they want to take him. I said, you can't take him. This is somebody's son. Michael does not live with me permanently. He is a graphic artist. He is a DJ. He comes and go. Anytime he's in Abuja, he stays with me. I said, this is somebody's son. How do I explain? First, to my own comrades, and then to the parents of Michael, that by 2 a.m. somebody came to pick him. Do I know if you are a kidnapper or a ritualist? That no, you can't take him. And at that point, they asked that, well, you may need to accompany us. I said, I'm happy to accompany you. Because how do I explain it to his family, to my comrades? And we were taken down, two of us initially, we were blindfolded immediately. Halfway to where we are going, where they took us to. It's about 15 minutes from where I live. But halfway, they stopped. And I think they got a directive to go back and take any living thing, anything that breaks in that house. And then two other people, Mosul uh, Sadiq and one other person, were all taken. After the Marlon Link, just to the Sorrent, so about one hour for a drive of just less than 15 minutes, they took us somewhere, blindfolded. And we are kept in the cold room. And we undergo, we underwent more than 15 hours of interrogation. We got to where we are going about 3 a.m. after they took us by 2 a.m. And later that same day, at about 6 p.m., they took us to the intelligence response team, a very notorious detention center. I mean, the people know as old, uh, old Abatua in Abuja, where the old SAS, in fact, SAS, in the recent, forget the change of name. And we're, we're, we're dumb there. And to be fair to the man in charge, he said, Well, I didn't arrest you. Those who arrested you only came to dump you here because they don't have a, a detention facility. And that's where we are. Even my protestation that I am diabetic and I'm potentially hypertensive fell off on death years. I had no access to my medications, no access to my phone, no access to friends, no access to family, no access to a lawyer. And I was kept there from 2 a.m. that 2 a.m. until the evening of Thursday. Between you and I, I don't even know why they released me. But I know they chased me out, out like a dog. Even my insistence that, no, I cannot leave these boys here without even letting them know 
that I've been let out, I've been, I'm being let go was refused. So the boss, that trauma alone is enough to kill anybody. I said, no, I, we came together. You mean you, you are living here without our, I mean, without uh, our knowledge? I was denied that, that opportunity. But something I just want to say, two important things that I learned from this experience. First, Nigeria is more divided than we ever thought. We had more than five teams over that 15, 16 hours that interrogated us. But the whole of that team is from a particular section of the country. How can you have a national institution and the major people there are from a particular section? I know the anger. The anger was not that there was protest or some people there are some, some miscreants who should, we do not support it, by the way, did certain things. Their anger was that it happened in their section of the country. And what that, what, what that told me is that, so if it had happened in any other part of the country, they won't fucking guard them care. I'm sorry to use that word. They won't care. Which means that that particular institution, when there was answers, and the state instigated violence, they didn't care. But because on this occasion, it happened in that particular region, that was the anger. And I think that's the anger that they are using against our comrades, uh, Michael Adaramui and uh, Sadiq Monsi. And it is a shame. And it tells us something that we need to work on the unity of this country. Nigeria is deeply divided that I ever thought. I know we have, we have divisions. We have our cleave, uh, cleave lines, but this experience taught me that <laughs> Nigeria is more than, it's more divided than we ever thought. And it is time for us now, to avoid, in order to avoid disaster, to start working on the unity of this country. Secondly, I think on that democracy, even if you suspect, suspect people of crimes, the democratic and legitimate thing to do is to invite them not to go and invade them and kidnap them because I was this state sponsored kidnap by 2 a.m. We got no invitation, we got no any form of notice only for the so called security agencies to invade our apartments by 2 a.m. Okay. So, then there are basic access under international and our laws, under AJA. You can't interrogate somebody without the person having a lawyer present. We were interrogated for more than 15 hours. There was no lawyer. We were blindfolded. We didn't have access to anybody in the world. For, more, for up to now, so Dick and um, uh, Michael, have, they don't have access. Nobody has uh, have access to them. They can't call. Nobody can reach them. They don't have direct access to their lawyers. And I'm talking about a facility other than the first uh, three days where we are giving some humane treatment, let me in quotes. So after then, they have been on their own. We were on our own. For me to lie down, to get a place to lie down in that detention facility, outside the open place they kept us for the first three days, have to, we have to pay. It is that bad. And I think we just need to focus on our administration of justice, uh, uh, administration of justice system. It is terrible. In there, I found army officers police officers who have been denied basic rights. Basic rights. No access to the world, no access to lawyer, no access to family members. We can't continue like this as a nation, or especially under a democracy. As student leaders, we know the prices we paid for this democracy. It is a shame and a disaster that under the so-called democracy, 
who have to be subjected to this type of treatment. Not even the military did this to us. They respected our right to protest. They gave us the opportunity to defend ourselves before we were arrested. As a student leader, nobody came to arrest me by 2 a.m. Most importantly, those boys, because of the trauma they are going through, they have health challenges. They need to have access to proper medical care. Then, then the other point, please, I want to beg the NIA and the NSA and no Rubadu, please stop surveilling us. Leave our phones alone. Leave our laptops alone. Leave our, I mean, social media handles alone. Because right now we're under permanent surveillance for doing nothing. And again, we are socialists and we are not ashamed to say it. We know nothing about the Russian flag. Because the current Russian government is not a socialist government. It's just another capitalist government whose agenda is not in tune with the Russian revolution led by Lenin and Trotsky. It's not in tune. We are not, we are not a, a, what is it called? A, we are not a Putin supporter, a Russian or a, a Putin. We are not put, uh, put, uh, put, uh, Put a uh, put uh, put, uh, put We are socialists, and we are not ashamed to see it. And we we'll raise the flag of socialism any day, any time. And you can see our flag here. You can see our flag. We are members, we are members of the Committee for Workers in the International. We don't know anything about Russian flag. Lenin does not know anything about it. Sadiq does not know anything about it. And they were never arrested, even on the streets. They were kidnapped, including myself, by 2 a.m. by the NSA, through the NIA. Want please to make it very clear. If they are looking for people to rope, it is not us. And most importantly, the demands, our demands are very clear. And the demand of the embed, embed governance uh, his, his protest is very clear. Stop the madness. No country in the world flows, no same country in the world flows its currency. The American dollar has a margin that it can never fall below. If it does that, there will be massive intervention by the states. The, uh, what is it called? The UK pound has a margin it can never fall below. If it does, there will be massive inter intervention. The uh, uh, EU, the European Union EU, as a margin, they can never fall below. If it does, there will be massive intervention. The Japanese yen, the uh, Chinese uh, yuan, can never fall below certain margin. If it does, there will be massive intervention. The same people are the ones who say, why are not telling us throw your currencies, your currency to the dogs? And we'll see what has happened. We saw what has happened. It has never been this bad. We know we have never really had good governance in Nigeria, but it has never been this bad. The first, you threw our currencies to the dog. Secondly, you put... <laughs> Secondly, you remove the so-called phantom... Uh, what is it called? Subsidy. Phantom. It is now, thank God for the quality between them among themselves. Now we know that the same people who are removing subsidy are the same people who are blending uh, petroleum, uh, petroleum products in mortar. The same people. And since, two, since 1999, they have not been able to fix one refinery despite billions of dollars that has been allocated. These are the critical policies. Education, what we need is not student loan. It's for the state to fund education. Because even Nigerian Constitution is very clear and states very clearly that it's the duty of the government to fund education. I therefore want to conclude by saying this they should stop chasing shadows, face the real issues. Thank you, gentlemen of the press.